Let's go! Miles Brennan Film Study. Comment down below. Do you believe he should be the QB1 of this LSU offense? Because you guys saw the Garrett Nussmeyer Film Study. I mean, the guy killed it. Is Miles still in this quarterback race? I believe that he is, and I think his spring game performance actually was fine. Uh, one thing that I always love is getting the football in Jack Besh's hands. As we always say, good things tend to happen. We get Jack Besh here on a jet sweep. My favorite thing, though, about this play, we know Jack can run the football with, uh, you know, when he, he's great with the ball in his hands. But the truth is, this play was perfectly blocked. So with the pocket quarterback, your blocking just has to be better. And right off the jump here, where this play was made is this walk-on tackle, Balestra, turns Quincy Wiggins to the inside. We are cooking with Griso offensively. We're getting a good block right here on the second level with Jack Mashburn and Xavier Hill getting a great double. And where the block was actually made right here is by Josh Williams. We want to seal everyone to the inside. And in a perfect world, we want Jack shooting through right here. But what's interesting is Jack, if for some reason... Uh, Langua took an outside angle right here on Josh Williams and got over the top. Jack right here is reading this block. So if Langua would have jumped over the top, Jack would have actually been able to cut up here because Quincy Wiggins isn't there anymore, and he would have been off to the races. But Jack reads this block perfectly. Langua blocked to the inside, and look at this. We're cooking with Grease right here. He's carrying Matthew Langua, who did a good job fighting his way back into this play. So you know what they say, feed the hot hand. And once again, we have a really well-blocked play. The mistake, and this is an extremely difficult block right here for Cardell, but we're running a, a, a little tunnel bubble, whatever you want to call it, screen, okay? So a little screen right here to Jack Besh. And Cardell's job right here is actually to block Matthew Langua, but two things actually happen here. The first is Cardell doesn't get off this defensive lineman quick enough. So if you are going out there to block um, a safety on a screen, right now you need to get gone, okay? He waits a little too long and engages with this defensive lineman, and Cardell is late. Langua, who reads this really well to make this play right here on Jack Besh, and you'll see what happens here. The ball is perfectly thrown right there to uh, from Miles Brennan. Y you've got to make this tackle. If you're going to play Division I uh, defensive back and you read screens like this, you've got to make this tackle right here, and he does it. Jack has him beat. The only issue is Jack would have been off to the races had Cardell not concussed his own guy. Uh, I'm glad Jack was okay, uh, but because Carter was late getting out there, Langua was able to fight his way back into this play. So we were able to get a first down because uh, Jacoby and Guillory jumped off sides, and we are moving the chains. And hopefully when Fitzgerald West is the next Lloyd Cushenberry, he can look back at this snap and laugh. He does a dead ball snap, which is a little bit different than your traditional hands-on-laces snap from a center, but this is... The highest shotgun snap I think I have ever seen. So, you know, to defend Miles Brennan, there was a lot that happened in the spring game. You know, we, we skipped his first drive because, you know, it was two run stuffs on second and third down. There was nothing he could really do about this. I have to give Quincy Wiggins a lot of credit. He's had some rough spots during the spring. This was ridiculous hustle to come make this play. Okay, this is, I mean, this just shows you his potential. He, he's nowhere close to this ball. If you're Josh Williams, you gotta fall on this. You've got to fall on this football. And Miles Brennan, same thing as well. And God, that's just really good awareness right there by Quincy, good stuff. Boom, okay. Huh, wake up, come on, I need your help. It's a film study. We gotta figure out if Miles Brennan's actually gonna end up being the guy. First thing on this rollout to the right, this is obviously the big thing with Miles. Is he just a pocket statue? We don't get a good snap, okay? If we're rolling out to the right, the one thing we don't want to do is make him have to take an extra step to the left just to get the snap. Um, second thing here, this is some excellent, excellent defensive tackle play to fight through this block right here and draw this holding penalty on Makai Wingo. You see here, Makai Wingo quickly reads that this is a rollout to the right, 
and he's taking on a double team right here. And the one thing if you're Cardell is if you have help to the inside, the last thing we want you to do is get beat to your outside shoulder, and that's exactly... So you hear me say this a lot. This is why you can't take Jack Besh off the field. So much of wide receiver play is just hand fighting. Jack did this on a third and six versus Alabama against a veteran DB. It's just this little thing right here, okay? That's why you can't take Jack Besh off the field. It's the ability just to get open. And Jack is really fast. And obviously, he does have a great, thick build. But th that right there has nothing to do with either one of those things. Still, Jack Besh, once again, good things just happen. Six targets, six catches. We still get a nice positive gain here on first down. All right, so now it's third and six. What does Mike Dimbrock do? He goes back to the play he called more than anything else. It's what Walker Howard got his touchdown on. It's what Garrett Nussmeyer got his first reception on. This is mesh, right? This play is just going to work every time versus man coverage. And I kind of feel as if Brian Kelly wanted to, you know, get the confidence of his quarterbacks up because this defense is just dead in the water. There's no way that this linebacker who was pressing the A-gap is going to be able to get all the way out here to Armani Goodwin. This is just not going to happen in a game either. He actually almost bats this football down right here on this out. Really close. Good job by Miles avoiding that arm. And West Weeks, this is just such a tough play. And Goodwin's able to beat West Weeks right here. That's some excellent stuff right there by Armani. And now, you know, we're just letting Armani do what he can do best, which is obviously get up field. Great job by Matthew Lingua, you know, just riding him out of bounds. Good stuff. Now Jack Besh is out of the game, and Miles is working with walk-ons and Chris Hilton right here. And this is something that I saw that, that, was, that was different with Garrett Nussmeyer. So Nuss almost had this ball picked off, and this was a good job right here by Derek Davis once again reading this out and working over the top. Miles, you know, I... It was a little bit behind him. So on Nuss's out to stores, he threw it on the upfield shoulder. It is a little bit behind Cole. And because it was a little bit behind him, Derek Davis makes another good play right here and eventually strips this football out. Good stuff by DDJ. All righty, we move ahead here to uh, a first and 10. We're able to pick up a, a first down on a Josh Williams run, and Cole Taylor's blocking was really good. So now right here, Take a shot on first down. That's good stuff. Play action fake. We got all these linebackers to, uh, to to bite in, and a safety is in the box. So Miles says, look, let's take a shot and trust a guy to make a play down the field. And once again, it, it was a rough day for Kyron Lacey. I thought his blocking was good. I mean, that that's right on the money. I mean, <laughs> To play wide receiver at LSU, you got to make this play. Jaden's throw was actually better than this that, that Kyron dropped. Got to make this play. You know, uh, you, you just do. Good coverage by 40, uh, but still, I mean, it, it, we need that one. So if you really want to see impressive quarterback play from Miles Brennan, this is it. The first thing here is, and, and this is my favorite Miles snap by far. Look at the personnel. Three walk-on wide receivers and a blocking tight end who just got back on campus. And everybody that is currently on the field defensively is a scholarship guy. You also have a walk-on left tackle. And he is dominating Savian Jones right here. I, I like Balestra. And the pocket is pretty clean. And the good thing about a pass rusher in this situation you definitely do not have to worry about Miles Brennan's running ability. So, you know, this is excellent pass protection right here. Uh, I mean, no pass rush moves, no nothing on a clear passing down. So that is a little concerning. The second thing here is notice what Miles does here, okay? He's trying to get this football what looks to be in the flat to uh, Armani Goodwin. And look... We're all over this with Micah Baskerville. This is a good rep right here by Baskerville. So, Miles, you see his head right here processing the field, okay? One thing I didn't like right here is, look, you, you have him dead to rights. No need to grab the jersey right here. Uh, I, I don't know why Dumerville did that. But still, you know, Dumerville had a good game overall. 
Um, but you see, Miles is just doing processing right here. He has nowhere to go with the football. All the walk-on receivers are locked in, and Miles looks right, looks left, and then eventually finds Noah Nash at a Catholic high on the drag route. That's really good quarterbacking right there. Uh, by Miles, it, it was it the smoothest? Did it look like Tom Brady? Did Miles have a little happy feet? Yeah, but who cares? And look, I bet you it's pretty cool to catch a football if you're a Catholic high grad in front of a Catholic high legend in Clyde edwards Lair. Let's go! And so it's third and four. Miles Brennan locked in, ready to go. And we get the snap. And what do we do? Well, let's go back to good old-fashioned mesh. And I actually love when the mesh, we got Jack Besh back on the field. I love when on a, a mesh play, you hit uh, the comeback route over the middle, okay? And that is exactly what Miles Brennan does right here, wide open for a first down. Noah Nash on Jordan Tolls. Uh, you would like Jordan to do a little better here um, because if we, if we bat this football down, we're, we're getting off the field. They're kicking a field goal here. All right. So it looks as if we're running a, a, a slant to the inside, potentially, with the defensive line right here. But either way, we're getting some really good surge. I mean, look, we are blowing them into the backfield. We got some good penetration right here by Ali Gay. There is nowhere for our Monty Goodwin to go. But this is what he did so good at high school. Planning and getting skinny. And look at this run. I mean, they have him dead to rights. We are, I mean, we got him. And I have no idea how he got underneath Baskerville right here and was able to hold on and then well, break this tackle and fall forward for eight extra yards. Wow, that that's that's some special, special running back play. First down, and all LSU did was run the same plays with everyone. This was a touchdown that uh, Jaden got to Jack Besh. We're trying to do that here. Derek Davis Jr. had a good day overall. Um, he was able to fight over the top of Nick Storrs right there. And, you know, it's just good coverage. So now we're doing the same thing here with Josh Williams. Um, and, and this is where you know, technique becomes an issue when it comes to run fitting. Um, the way Georgia fits their runs is they don't want their defensive linemen penetrating. They don't want their linebackers just needlessly sprinting into the line of scrimmage, unless, of course, there's a blitz call. I don't know if there's a blitz call here, but what happens is, you know, this player has uh, the zone read. So this player has the quarterback here on the read. So the end is held up by the zone read. Now, for me, I, I would have my ends crash down on the running back every time until Miles Brennan actually pulls it because he never actually pulls it. Still, this is some good blocking right here. And we're able to just wash Wingo down. And Josh Williams is able to get underneath this and fall forward for a touchdown right here. Good finish by Josh to score this. Alrighty, so let's go through another Miles Brennan drive. It looks like we have the starting offensive line out here. One walk-on receiver, but mostly players that you're going to see play a lot. And here we are again. So we're running, once again, that good old-fashioned mesh. And obviously your first read is to the running back. We're trying to get it upfield on a rail, is what they call this. And... Uh, that's your first read normally is the rail in this situation. Once again, quarterbacks are taught different things. This is how Walker Howard got his touchdown pass to Corin Norman. So you see that the rail is covered right here by the linebacker. Now we're working on these crossers. And here's Mike Jones. He is on Nick Storrs right here. And Miles reads this perfect. We have a really good pocket. And Nick Storrs just has to catch this football. Uh, that's right in his bread basket. We got to have that one. Uh, if your stores. All right, so we're running counter. We're pulling both uh, Will Campbell and Tremont Shorts, blocking down, and once again, it's our run fits, okay? You're going to play too high safety, all right? So you have six defenders going up against our six blockers. So we have to really like what we have right here. Jay Ward does run into the box. 
Who cares because we're running counter away from him. And this is where the block was actually made that I thought was really key here. Wingo getting flush right here on this counter. And this is, you know, where run fitting comes down to technique. Uh, LSU's to fit the tackles last year were taught to shoot gaps. And the issue is when you shoot gaps versus counter, they could just wash you out of the play, which is what essentially happens here. And what you see, we get a good pull right here on shorts. Will Campbell gets Greg Penn right here. But notice Savian Jones does a good job reading counter. Not really a whole lot Cole Taylor could do right here. We just need Savian Jones to make this tackle. And I don't know why he decided to play patty cake right here. Um, you know, he's right here. Dive and make this tackle and... Well, it's not what happens, and we get to see Trey Bradford's explosiveness. Now, all we need Trey to do right here is beat this safety, and let's see if he can. Uh, he doesn't. Good job by Jay Ward chasing it down, but a huge explosive run play. And we do a better job right here. The play was kind of cut off to defend counter, and this time we get to see Savian Jones uh, be himself and make a big play right here. Now it's second and long, and you're playing a quarterback who can't run. This is where, you know, you can do any pass rush move you want. You don't have to worry about contain as much either because of Miles' lack of mobility. We want you to get creative. Spin moves, swim moves, rip moves. That's just too clean, especially if you're playing man coverage. And I know Sage Ryan is a really good player, but... You know, you can't guard guys for this long, especially if a ball's thrown that accurately to Francione right past the sticks. Good catch right there by Evan the walk-on, and not the worst coverage. We just got to get better pressure on the QB. All right, so once again, we're going to run counter versus a six-man box with the safety creeping in, and we are running away from the safety creeping into the box, and it's essentially the same thing, but the, it, it is the exact same thing that happened a minute ago, except this time... Uh, our linebackers here get a better read on it, and we still don't fit it well, okay? We're washing Wingo out of the play, and Cam Wire gets to the second level, and this right here actually isn't that bad by Savian Jones, except when you take on this puller right here, all right, you need this needs to be violent, and you need to be able to two-gap this. A lot easier said than done, and by two gap, I mean get right here, and then whichever way Goodwin decides to go, you need to be able to shed the block and make the tackle. It's a really hard thing to do. Instead, we are not able to disengage the block, and there's no hold. I mean, it, it, this just seems to be a little bit better. Uh, Jones stopped it on first down the last drive. Good kick out right here by Will Campbell. And once again, this is just too easy. We're just, I mean, it's free yards right here. Now, as Brian Kelly said in the post-game press conference, the defensive line didn't stem. They weren't really doing anything crazy defensively. Still, it, it's it's good offense going up against that run fit. All right, here we go. We're throwing a fade to BTJ. It wasn't a good throw. It also wasn't the absolute best route. And Makai Gardner, you can't really see it here. You just kind of have to assume. But if you're the wide receiver running the fade, uh, you want to make sure that you give yourself some room. And you notice Gardner was able to just out-physical BTJ out of bounds. So, you know, that's just really good coverage. Move ahead to here to the second down. And once again, if you're playing man coverage and you run short crossers, the quarterback should tear up the defense. So right now, I know this is going to sound strange. I can't really fault the defensive line, or I can't really fault the defense because you're just dead man walking. Uh, and right here, Mike Jones is just late getting out here, but there's three receivers he's got to run through to get out of here to um, Armani Goodwin. We're running another mesh concept here, and this is a good job by Kyron Lacey not hitting this defensive back. And honestly, if Miles had worked here to Cole Taylor, he's catching a touchdown and scoring. This is not bad, though. That's the safer throw, especially knowing that the linebacker's got a long way to go. This is actually good linebacker play. 
It doesn't look like it, but Mike Jones makes a touchdown saving tackle. Boom! I'm looking at you. Yes! Now, before we get to this final touchdown right here to Malik Neighbors, once again, I want to shout out our friends at Prezi Collection and PrezzyCollection.com. The new DBU watches are out. Promo code PHL. You get $30 off, which is essentially like 80 bucks off the initial price. Are you kidding me? Check it out. PrezzyCollection.com. So, this is the Miles Brennan touchdown there's quite a few things i want to talk about on this play but this was some of the best coverage we saw all day right here by sage ryan he just gets unlucky that his deflection goes right into the hands of malik neighbors so the first thing here is i love the play call right we're getting man coverage right here you know nuss hit malik on this same route what makes it more difficult for miles is that this is a red zone and you don't have as much feel to work with second thing here is once again you know if you're if you're charles turner this is the first team offensive line the snap is a little high again okay still relatively accurate the issue though is protection actually breaks down we are running slide it looks like it's slide protection to the right and charles turner slides down to the right and now we need Tremont Shorts to close off Makai Wingo here up the middle and Wingo gets a ton of pressure right up the middle now did this affect the throw probably not because this was just you know a catch and throw read right here Miles saw that the safety was right over here he also saw Jay Ward right here so he knows that there is no safety over the top of Sage Ryan right here so it's just an automatic throw, especially if you think it is man coverage on this slot fade, whatever you want to call it. Um, the throw, maybe it needs to be thrown out more here. Yeah, this isn't a good throw. Take that back. Huh? 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 Yeah, maybe you, you want to just lead Malik a little bit more. But the second thing here is Sage Ryan goes for the one-handed interception and that's fine uh, obviously a turnover there takes points off the board but at the same time it is third and seven so if it is third and seven bat the football down here and you're holding them to a field goal so this should have been picked off or this should have been at the very least batted down still great con concentration right there by malik neighbors now of course you guys know that spring football is indeed spring football and it's a strange thing to evaluate now how good was miles brennan in this spring game well i'll say this compared to the other two quarterbacks miles had the most variables going against him so we didn't show you the first drive where there was two very conservative third down calls that stopped his drives the second thing obviously the snap over his head the third thing is he was working more so with walk-on receivers it seemed than the other two quarterbacks so miles you know this was one of the few drives where it was just all first teamers for miles brennan you saw he was able to respond with the touchdown and the second thing is miles's accuracy in this game was actually pretty good overall i i it wasn't what i thought it was at first and it did seem at times he would under throw deep balls just in practice but overall i thought miles was was okay i really do um uh, you see matt house right here smiling with the defensive coaches uh with frank wilson right there I, i've shared this in, in pretty much every radio slot that i've done um with you know sean fox 104.5 jay hill whoever I wanted to make sure that it was known that the defense ran the same play pretty much every time, right? And it wasn't just that I was letting it be known. It was that Brian Kelly let it be known at the end of the game itself. And, you know, BK will, will, will always give you one big nugget pretty much in every press conference. That's why you got to listen to him. Uh, that, to me, is my major takeaway, is I don't think you could really take anything away from the defense uh or or really the offense too 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 much because you know it, it does dilute the sample that you're running very 
novice defensive plays. So for me, I, I, I put that out there, and it is very important you know, to note that. I also think all three of the quarterbacks are just in a log jam. We'll get to Walker Howard's film study. Obviously, he's QB4 right now. But the truth still remains the same, that this room is just out there. Now, I will say this. If there was one big star, and a commenter actually brought this up in the spring game, it was Jay Ward. If there was one defensive player who really made my jaw drop, Jay Ward made so many different types of plays in the spring game. So I give him a ton of credit for that. Now, there will be some more videos floating in your face. I am currently in England right now as you watch this video. When unless you're watching this like a month from now. So it is kind of strange. I might be a little slow responding to comments, so please keep that in mind as well. Okay, there will be uh, the Nuss and the Jaden Daniels film study floating in your face in just a second. It is power hour LSU. Bam! And tonight, I think we're going to go get some Indian curry. Let's go.